Hello guys, and today we will learn how we can make a moving snake. So this will be built on uh, top of a video and a video, another video. And at the end, we will be able to have a snake game. Okay. And of course, on this video, we will learn how we can render this cute little moving green pixel. Okay. And this, uh, of course, looks through the screen. Okay. It doesn't go off the screen or off the edge. <clears throat> okay. So let's see how we can do that. First, let us open the development server. <clears throat> okay. Going left. And this is just a project that I have already set up. We can use plain JavaScript for this, so you don't need to worry because we are using nothing but just uh, a development server from this build. Okay. How can we render that? Well, first, let's go to the development server here. And on our HTML, we just have a simple canvas with the ID of game screen. So we are grabbing that canvas right here and the context of that canvas as well. So this is what is going to be used to render items or to render uh, pixels on the canvas element. We also have its width, we will grab its width and its height and its color. So how can we render this color or this canvas here as a color black? Well, you can just say again, uh, context, fill style. So what will be the fill style of this context? Well, equals to canvas color. And now we want to fill a rectangle in that canvas or in the context. Okay. And the starting point of every, or the starting point of a canvas is zero, zero, or the uppermost leftmost corner. Okay, so that would be in here at the edge or corner. Okay, up until what point? Well, up until its width and height. And now we have a black square on the screen. Beautiful. Okay, so that's pretty much saying that, okay, start at this position, 0, 0, and then I want you to fill uh, the volley or the x-axis equal to its width right here, and the y-axis equals to its side. Okay, so now, to be able to successfully have a moving screen, we will be changing the values or the position of the snake. Okay, let's try that. Well, how can we repeatedly do that? Well, that would be by animating it. So, and then, request animation frame animate. So, request animation frame is a function or a method that tells the browser that we want an animation when we call this function. So this is just to lessen the load on the CPU and to serve to conserve memory as well if, for example, a user navigates to another tab. And this is also available if you want to keep track if a user navigates to another tab with visibility. Wait, where is it? It should be in here, um, even. <laughs> Excuse me. Mm -hmm. My bad, my bad. There we go. So, changed. Now, if we inspect and navigate to another tab and go back, as you can see, it, it fired twice. That would be navigating to another tab and going back to this page. Okay? So, just a uh, fun fact. <laughs> okay, anyway. So, now since we will keep on on this, let me just have it like so. And 
put this okay I will show you why we need to put this inside so let's just put this in here for now so first let's declare actually the so let's declare the snake handle equals to its position so in this case I guess we want them to start at zero zero and the dimensions of the snake would be snake size equals to 10 so its width would be snake size and height would be its snake size okay and then the snake body so this is Im very important when you are making something like the logic behind a snake in a snake game because if we go back to that we can see that we are controlling the head of the snake okay and its body parts are just following the head so the logic here is saying that we the body parts is before the snake head okay so x would be snake head dot position dot x plus or in this case we can go minus i guess mm. yeah i guess we can go plus mm, minus let's go minus minus uh snakes so and y would be zero okay so we want this snake to start lying down horizontally because if we um had the same value here then this will be positioned diagonally let me just declare the same dimensions should be in here actually this one position there we go like so now can just copy this and multiply this by 2 because well this is the second body part and the same for the next one just copy and paste the third body part okay so now let's try to uh, animate this like so the same thing ctx dot fill style is equals to let's declare this snake color to be red uh, to be green rather and now let's have snake color and then game ctx dot fill that and be snake head so let's go with the snake head first dot x there we go dimensions dot width and yeah what the fill is beautiful now we need to fill the snake body as well so before one part of body or snake body. so this is not really the recommended way to do stock when you're building out projects but this is just great if you're trying to get the idea there okay to see that you get the right idea so let's see if we do have it um ctf game ctx dot fill red uh, part dot position dot x part dot position dot y should be dimensions now there we go and now of course we cannot see it because we are going at the um over the edge below zero okay so now we want to change the values of this every time or yeah every time we animate the snake so we can just put that inside so every time we animate the snake we want to uh, change the value of the snake head position and since we want the body parts to follow 
the snake head. Well, we need to have a variable of part in part equals to snake head dot position part. Okay. And now in here we will change the position of the snake head to be equals to x plus 10, for example, okay? And y, to, for now, remain at 0. Because if we change this at the same time, we will get a diagonal, diagonally moving snake head. Okay, so now we want to look through the part or butt parts like so and get its position. So we'll declare it as temporary uh, snake head on oh no, part that position like so. And now fill rectangle. Uh, okay. And, and we also need to fill that the snake head. Oh, wait, I think we don't need to do that. Yeah, yeah, we don't need to. We just need to change the values of the part, body part. Like so. Okay, now we just need to change this, the value of this variable right here. In preparation for the next body part, which is behind the current body part we are in, like so. Now, if we save this, we should have a moving snake. Now, why are we getting this very long line? Well, it's because we are not covering the fill or the painted um, part of the canvas with color black. If we did, if we did that. You can see that this snake is moving. It's moving. And uh, it's very fast because, well, the refresh rate of our screen is fast, or the browser is fast. So we can just say uh, set time for every 1000 seconds. There we go. We have a moving snake. So how can we change its direction? Well, we can declare something. So what is the path of the snake? Is it going vertically or horizontally or along the x-axis or along the y-axis? So something like that. What's uh, to horizontal first at the first or at initialization and the direction. So what is the direction of the snake? Is it going to the left, to the right, above or below? Well, if a snake is going above, so if we remember the initial position of stuff or pixels in a canvas starts at 0, 0. So 0 meaning above for the y-axis and to the left for the x-axis. So if we are going above, that means we are getting closer to zero. So if we are getting closer to zero, we are going to the negative side of the spectrum. If you are going below, that means we are going far away from zero, positive, okay? So that would be positive one. So this is the same or true as well for, on, for the x-axis, okay? So now, in here, we can just have an if condition. If path is equal to horizontal, we can do this. Else, if path is equal to vertical, we can do uh, We can do something like this. Okay. And it's the same logic that we have. So now the important thing is to have an event listener to the user's 
copy down events. Okay. So we need to check what key was pressed by the user. So it's key, not key code. Okay. And this will be a switch statement. The key that was pressed. So in the case that arrow down was pressed, we want to set the path to be equals to vertical and the direction to be equals to 1. Break the statement. But if that's not the case, then we want to look for other cases as well. So in the case that arrow up is pressed, we set the path to be equals to vertical and the direction to be equals to negative 1. Okay. Break that. In the case that it's R left, set the path to horizontal and the direction to negative 1 as well. Break that statement. And in the case that it's R right, then we just want to set the path to horizontal and the direction to 1, positive 1. Okay. And now we can just say multiply to direction. Okay, let's try this out. If I press arrow down, it should move down. There we go. Arrow right, we should move to the right. There we go. Arrow down again, move to the uh, move downwards, arrow left, move to the left. There we go. Arrow right, move to or move above. Oh. Arrow up, rather. So we should be moving down. I'm moving up, rather. I'm not sure why we are moving. Ah, because it's multiplied by 1, of course. There we go. Okay, moving down, arrow down. Moving right, arrow right. Moving up, arrow up. There we go. Now, to make this faster, we can just say every 100 milliseconds. Okay, and pull up. And as you can see, it's going over the screen. How can we prevent that? Well, we can have if conditions in here. So we can just separate this first. Add procedure x equals to the new value. And if this new value is greater or equal to the width of the canvas, that means it is at the edge. So we just need to reset this at zero or teleport this at zero. Else, if the position, the new position is less than or equal zero, that means it's going over to the edge at the left side. Okay, or on the left. So now the new bug, we just want it to be teleported to the width of the canvas minus its well uh, minus its width. Okay. And now we can just say position x. So this is true as well for the vertical position. So let's just change this to y. y like so. Do it full. And change this to height. Change this to height as well. And remove the period and in here the y and now we can just say the position y now they should do it except for this one there we go now if we go over the edge there we go we get teleported to the opposite direction okay and to make this faster, we can just say every 10 milliseconds. As you can see, we have a very fast moving snake. Okay. And I think the middle round that I found was 50 milliseconds. Which is right here. Okay. And congratulations, we have built a moving snake. And the, log and the lessons we learned here is... Uh, to infinite loops to contain a specific item in a canvas, to listen for events, a switch statement, and to change the direction.
depending on what was pressed. And we don't have to set if, else, if, else, you know. We just need to multiply it by negative or positive, which is very, very good. Okay. There we go. And that is all for today. Thank you for watching. I hope you learned how you can render stuff out to a canvas element and make beautiful games or, I don't know, a text editor. It's what um, Google Docs use, really, a canvas element, if you check. Uh, yeah. That's all for today. I hope you learned something. And good luck on your development journey. Happy learning. Have a good day. Goodbye.